Hi, my name is Rudolf. I'm an American expat who retired early and moved to Finland. I moved to Finland during COVID, but before that I lived in Oman and in the UK, so I've been out of the US for many, many years. One of the things that's intrigued me while living abroad is trying to understand the MAGA movement. I was in Florida recently and needed to come back home to Finland. Normally when I do that, I just rent a car and then return it at the airport. This time I just decided to try something different and see what it would be like to take an Uber. It's just under two hours from where I'm staying to the airport, so obviously that's a pretty long Uber ride, so that's the reason I've never done it before, but I just decided this time to just try it and see what it was like. When my driver arrived, I was a little bit surprised to see that she was about 70. I wasn't expecting someone that old to be driving for Uber, and especially not such a long trip to the airport. Um, I got in the car and we started and we just had some kind of a light chit chat. I don't even really remember what we were discussing, but probably about 20 to 30 minutes into the conversation, it came up that she was a Trump supporter. Now, technically, that should not have surprised me because, you know, this is Florida after all, and it's a bit, I wouldn't say rural, but it's not, it's, it's, uh, it's not like an urban area of Florida. It's central Florida. And so um, I, was a, I was intrigued because I'd actually never had an opportunity to speak to a Trump supporter. I don't know about your um, YouTube feed, but I'm constantly getting all of these feeds from um, left-leaning um, channels where they do kind of these interview with MAGA supporters and they try to mock them and make them look really stupid. And so, um, you know, I'd seen a lot of videos with people from MAGA talking, but I myself have never spoken to somebody who was a Trump supporter or even if it was a Trump supporter, but a real MAGA type of uh, person. So, um, you know, you know, they say religion and politics, you shouldn't really discuss with people, but because I live in Finland and I know I'm not really going to get many opportunities to have these conversations, I couldn't resist. And I wanted to kind of speak to this person, just kind of understand where she was coming from, why she supported Trump. Um, I don't usually talk about politics. I'm definitely not a Trump supporter. So, um, you know, I was just, I like to hear two sides of the story. So I wanted to kind of get her side and understand where she was coming from and why she supports Trump. Now here's a bit of background information I picked up from my long discussion with the driver. I've just made some notes over here, so I'm just going to refer to them just so that I don't forget. Her family is a mix of Democrats and Republicans, um, but more Republican leaning. She grew up middle class. Her father owned a factory and she went to um, boarding school. Um, so, um, you know, I would say maybe even I would say upper middle class because they also traveled a lot and internationally. So, yeah, I would say she had a pretty good upbringing. She herself had 11 kids and one was very, very sick and in the hospital all the time. And um, that caused her some um, difficulties. But um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if she worked or what she did for work. Um, her husband was um, in the hospitality restaurant business and it sounded like he did pretty well and you know they had a, a decent um, middle class uh, lifestyle when she was um, you know married and uh, raising her kids other than the issue with one child being very sick. Um, she doesn't support Obamacare and I'll kind of get to that a little bit later. Um, in the last five years she's had some real financial difficulties. Um, she, uh, she lived in a nice part of St. Petersburg, Florida. I believe it was on the water and, uh, you know, different life events happened and, you know, now she's driving Uber at 70 because, um, she doesn't have, have enough money to pay her bills. Her, her husband died about five years ago and that's when some of the financial difficulties started. So that's kind of one reason I'm thinking... Perhaps she didn't work, and so maybe she doesn't have a good social security or pension um, support behind her. One thing I really liked about her was she had a very positive attitude. You know, here she is, 70 years old, and, you know, she's had some financial knocks, and she's not sitting around complaining about it. 
you know, she's getting in her car, she's driving Uber, you know, she's just, you know, really grafting and trying to make, um, make ends meet. And she's not sitting back, you know, um, expecting handouts. You know, she thinks that people should work for um, what they need. And she's, you know, she's happy to do it. She's not complaining, um, you know. So I really admire that about her. A couple other things. Overall, I would say, you know, she's very patriotic and she wants the best for the country. And, um, you know, all of her beliefs and desires and ideas are around what she thinks is best for the country. Not even so much. I, do, I don't see her as being selfish and thinking about, you know, what's best for me. She, in, in her mind, she supports ideas and policies that she thinks are um, going to take the country forward. A couple of the traits that came out in our discussion is she didn't come across as being overtly racist. She seemed very open-minded and um, she was not homophobic at all. Um, although she was, I would say, anti-woke and to a certain extent I would say I'm probably a bit anti-woke um, because I think sometimes uh, things just get taken too far to one side or the other. Um, but yeah, so it was... so. I felt like um, we could come together on certain things. You know, she had some um, positive um, aspects and I really could relate to the way she was thinking. So um, because of all this, I decided to kind of get into a conversation with her and try and understand where she was coming from. So of this two hour ride, I would say we probably spent about one hour talking about Trump and MAGA and all of those sort of things. I didn't say the word MAGA. I was just kind of saying, oh, you support Trump. And she's like, yes. And then we just kind of got into this discussion. Um, about half hour into the discussion, I kind of realized that, you know, we were never going to see eye to eye. And in the beginning, I thought, well, you know, maybe I can kind of convince her that, you know, MAGA isn't so great and, you know, see things from a different perspective. But, you know, after 30 minutes of talking to her, I realized that that was never going to happen. Um, so I then kind of gently kind of changed the conversation to some other topic. But, you know, it probably took about half an hour before we got off that topic. And, you know, the last half hour of the ride, we were talking about something else, but, you know, I don't remember what that was. Um, but one of the things I wanted to do on this video is just kind of like talk through what I learned or how that discussion went just by talking about different topics I would raise because I wanted to see what her perspective was. The first thing I wanted to talk about was the military. It's been reported that Trump um, says that people who join the military are suckers and he doesn't really respect the military. You know, the stuff he said about John McCain, oh, he was captured. Um, you know, I like people who weren't captured. He didn't serve in the military. And so I just find it really interesting that for someone who, you know, got out of serving in Vietnam um, and has really not really done any kind of public service, that I wanted to see, you know, how does she justify her feeling that, yes, he's patriotic and he loves this country. And her responses were that, you know, the things about Trump saying disparaging things about, you know, people being suckers and not really respecting the military, that those are all lies, that um, he didn't say them. No matter how many times people have come out and said, yes, he said them, I heard it, you know, she wouldn't hear it. In terms of not serving um, during the war, because she was also quite patriotic and really believes in military service, um, she said that, well, you know, a lot of people didn't serve during the war. And, you know, he's such a brilliant businessman, that's a waste of his talents. Um, so she didn't, you know, hold him to account to say that he didn't serve. Um, you know, she just wiped those criticisms away and didn't see anything wrong with that. So I was like, okay. And this is pretty much kind of how the conversation would go. The 2020 election, I asked her who won the 2020 election. And she said, you know, Trump won, but it was stolen from him. And when I asked, well, you know, how come he never won any of his legal challenges? You know, her response was, well, the judiciary is corrupt and it was just stolen and it was corrupt judges. And, you know, in her mind, she had this mindset, forget the fact that, you know, 
even Republican judges, judges appointed by Trump, did not rule in his favor. Um, you know, she's just got that talking point from Trump that it was stolen and everything is corrupt. And she, she just wouldn't hear anything else. And I thought about it later and I wish I'd asked her, well, if it's so corrupt and it's going to get stolen from him again, then, you know, number one, why wasn't it stolen from him the first time? Was it, why was it stolen the second time when he was actually the president and would have had more power to prevent it being stolen? And then number two, okay, if it's being stolen, then why bother run again? Because, you know, it's, it's rigged, it's crooked, you're never going to win. So what's the point in running a second time? But that thought came to me later. But to be honest, um, she was so like, you know, Trump, 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 cult of Trump that, you know, anything that kind of criticizes or questions what he says is just dismissed. And there was no critical thinking at all. It's like, accept anything Trump says and anything that goes against Trump um, is a lie. And, you know, don't question it at all. Transcripts and taxes. You know, she believes that Trump is a genius, a really smart person, and, um, you know, would think that he's constantly telling the truth. And so I asked her, well, you know, he says he's a genius, he's really, really smart, um, but yet he won't show us any proof. You know, why, don't, why doesn't he release his um, transcripts from school if he's so smart? You know, he basically leads you to believe that, you know, he was a straight-A student. You know, perfect grades. Sure, great. Show us the proof. And, you know, it doesn't bother her. She doesn't question why is it that if he's so great and he does all these things that he says he does, why doesn't he show us the proof? His tax returns. He's a billionaire. He's rich. He makes so much money. Okay, show us the proof. And, you know, in her mind, if he doesn't want to show the proof, in fact, he doesn't show... He talks about what he does, but he doesn't actually demonstrate it. He doesn't show, you know, he doesn't, he can't like, you know, show any actual proof, which is why he always loses when he takes things to court and he doesn't release anything um, for that can be scrutinized. But she just believes what he says and doesn't understand or doesn't think that he needs to, to show any proof. You know, if he doesn't show any proof, that's okay. But yet, when it comes on to something like Barack Obama, you know, she wants to see his birth certificate because she won't believe that he's a U.S. citizen unless she sees it. And even if she sees it, you know, she's suspicious that it's probably a fake. But Trump shows nothing, but yet she believes everything he says. I mean, that's what really surprised me, that someone could be so, like, one-sided in her thinking. And, and it really makes me understand when people say the, the cult of Trump. She really is like a cult leader and she believes whatever he says and does not question anything critically. <laughs> and, you know, she was very, very critical of the Democrats, the Clintons, the Bidens. And what I found really interesting is there are certain things that she was saying about them. And I would say, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Um, you know, I think that Hunter Biden is a very unsavory character. Um, and... You know, I, you know, I, I don't really, I'm not really following his case, but just, you know, things I've heard, I think he's done a lot of wrong things. But in, and I'm willing to say, you know, I'm now, I used to be an independent, but I actually just uh, registered as a Democrat because I think the Republican Party is completely shameless. And anyone that stays in the Republican Party, I just couldn't vote for. Um, you know, you might be a good person, but just the way the party is going, I don't see how any self-respecting person could stay in that party. But anyway, but having said that, there are a lot of things I would criticize the Democrats about. But what I found interesting is that there is nothing. She wouldn't criticize anything. And I just think it's really interesting that someone could think that the Democrats are all bad. The Republicans are all good. You know, who thinks that way? You know, I always think you know, everyone has their flaws and no one's going to be perfect. But to kind of think that, you know, everything is perfect, you know, um, she complains about, um, you know, how Hunter Biden and the Bidens have really enriched themselves. But then when I say, well, what's, what has Jared Kushner done? You know, what are all these deals, the billions of dollars that he's gotten since he's come out of the White House? You know, oh, that's business. You know, Trump was a billionaire. He didn't need to, um, he didn't need um, to go into the White House. You know, he never took a salary. And, 
then I said, well, what about his hotel where, you know, um, he had a hotel near the White House. Anyone that wanted to do business um, with Trump, they needed to stay in that hotel. And, you know, she'd say, oh, well, it's not illegal. So, you know, anytime you criticize or you say something negative or question something, you know, she couldn't even say, yeah, that was, yeah, that was probably a bit, you know, underhanded or, you know, Literally, there was nothing. She never had a bad word to say about Trump. And it was kind of this thing where I realized that, you know, you know, when, when Trump had made that comment that he could shoot someone in um, on Fifth Avenue, and wouldn't lose a vote. It was that kind of thing where um, there was such a double standard where criticizing the Democrats for things, which I completely some of the things I completely agreed were um, should be criticized. But then seeing nothing negative or nothing wrong with Trump. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd never been in that kind of a situation. And so it kind of made me think that, you know, if I was running um, a campaign, you know, those MAGA voters, I would just completely ignore. I mean, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing you can do. Um, I couldn't even, I really couldn't have a conversation because nothing I said, which she would never take anything I said on board and think, you know, that's a good point. You know, it would be, oh, that's a lie. And, you know, if anyone that's even doing a little bit of critical thinking, if you look at like Fox News and you see where, um, you know, they would make fun of Trump off air behind his back in the emails, you know, someone would actually watch Fox News and understand that they themselves were lying and behind the scenes were admitting that they were lying. You know, there was the Dominion lawsuit where they ended up paying was it a billion or close to a billion? You know, um, I, just, I just couldn't get my head around how it's so obvious that, you know, the things that they're seeing on the news are lies. And when it comes out, it completely, they don't see it. She didn't see it, you know. It's, um, she takes what she wants to hear, anything positive, anything um, supporting her notion and that Trump is a great person and anything negative it's like, even if it's on Fox News, even when they need to, you know, retract something, it, does, it doesn't register. On those lines, another um, thing I wanted to talk to her about was um, criticism. You know, like, for example, you've got his VP now, J.D. Vance. You have Mitch McConnell. You have uh, Lindsey Graham. Um, prominent people who at different times were very, were never Trumpers, were criticizing Trump. And then suddenly they're now behind him. And, you know, I, I, was, I wanted to know her take on it. I'm like, you know, his vice president now was someone who said he, he hated Trump. He, call, he, ref, he um, referenced that Trump was someone like Hitler. You know, how do you explain that? Um, and her explanation was, these people didn't know Trump. Once they got to know Trump and realized what his genius was, they realized the error of their ways. And I thought, oh my God, that's when I really threw up my hands because I'm thinking, no, these people realize that in order to get reelected, because there was enough of a MAGA base that to protect themselves, they had to just pretend that they went along with this stuff. But, you know, for her to really, in her mind, really think that these people were um, just dumb, didn't realize Trump's genius. And then once they learned more about what he stood for and what he's done, then they saw the light, you know, you know, talk about a cult. So that's when I was like, okay, that's it. You know, this woman is beyond hope. I can't save her. I can't, um, you know, convince her of anything, any rational thinking. Um, it is what it is. We talked about Obamacare and she explained that she was completely against it. Um, you know, as, since I don't live in the US, I'm not as familiar with how Obamacare works, but you know, she was someone who had a sick child. And so I thought she would be a little bit more um, empathetic to people who have um, health issues and need medical care. And, but you know, she was just sort of like, Obamacare, forget it. And, my feeling was that it wasn't so much that it was Obamacare that she didn't like, but it was just that it was something that was proposed by the Democrats and she had nothing good to say about anything done by the Democrats. You know, um, Biden was terrible, the worst thing in the world. Um, 
she, she her standard of living was so much better under Trump. Um, but, you know, from my understanding, you know, her husband was alive, he died, um, and that caused some financial issues. But in her mind, the way she saw it was, you know, I had more money, um, life was easier under Trump, but, you know, the fact that her situation changed, her husband died, um, you know, I'm guessing from what I interpreted, you know, she had less income coming in, so now she was having to work and, um, you know, drive drive the taxi, drive the Uber. You know, she didn't like think to herself that, well, yeah, I've got half the income now because my, my husband is in, isn't here anymore. But she didn't like, in her mind, she didn't see how, well, that has nothing to do with Biden. You can't really blame him for that. But it was just like, you know, things are harder. My life is harder. You know, it was better when Trump was in, in office. Um, so, yeah, so that was one thing. Another thing um, I wanted, I did ask her about um, was the student loan forgiveness, because a lot of people are very negative on student loan forgiveness. Um, and she was like, yeah, no, that's terrible. Um, the students took out these loans and um, they should pay them back. End of story. And, you know, I took out a lot of student loans for my undergraduate and especially for my graduate degrees, and I did pay back my loans. But I feel that, you know, that's an industry that's a bit predatory, and you have a lot of people who go to schools and take out a lot of loans for degrees um, where they're never going to get a job that's going to allow them to pay it back. And I think that um, I do support student loan forgiveness because I think there's a lot of underhanded dealings that go on in that area. But anyway... Um, you know, she was like, no, they need to stand up for themselves. And if they take out the loans, they need to pay it back. So I was like, okay, great. So I said, well, what about the, um, COVID loans? You know, a lot of those were forgiven. Oh, well, yeah, no, I, I support that the COVID loans were forgiven. And I'm thinking, you know, to me, that's no different. But in her mind, it was like, oh, well, you know, the country was hurting. Everyone needed relief. So she supported that. And, you know, a lot of business people, you know, even people in Congress who are against, you know, student loan forgiveness, they themselves have businesses that took out um, COVID loans and took the loan forgiveness and didn't have any issues with it. So I just find it really interesting how people can be so self-serving and they have one point of view when it impacts them and then another point of view when it, when it impacts somebody else. So I don't uh, have much uh, faith in people for being, for many people, for thinking about the bigger picture and not being just, you know, selfish and self-centered. Um, I think that's, maybe that's just human nature, but that's kind of what I found from this encounter um, regarding loan forgiveness. So those are my thoughts about um, the cult of MAGA um, and having that discussion and um, trying to have a positive um, interaction with someone. I wouldn't say it was a bad interaction because, you know, we didn't yell at each other. You know, it was a really nice, um, good conversation and it was great to get someone else's opinion. And I wouldn't really, you know, I'm not like mocking her and I'm not saying that, you know, um, she's stupid or anything like that. You know, um, I really, I, I liked her and, you know, she was someone that, you know, if she was my next door neighbor, I would definitely go over and have coffee with her. I would definitely go out to lunch and, you know, socialize, that kind of thing. Um, I just wouldn't talk about um, politics because, you know, I can see her mind is set. But, you know, she's not a bad person. And, um, you know, I think for whatever reason, people think certain ways and, um, you know, there's a lot of psychology around how we have certain biases and we kind of reinforce things that I think benefit the way we, we kind of like, like to agree with things that benefit us and, and the way we like to think about things. Um, so I think that's just natural human nature. Um, it's a bit unfortunate that, you know, in this case and others like that, where they can't see the bigger picture and can't kind of empathize and put themselves in other people's shoes. But to me, that doesn't make them bad people. That just makes them human. Um, so that's my take on having a conversation with a MAGA, Make America Great um, believer. Thanks for stopping by to watch this video, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.